This is the Pro Yaku Report, Volume 1, Episode 13, Bonsai, Babe Ruth. This week, I bring you a book review of Bonsai Babe Ruth, Baseball, Espionage, and Assassination during the 1934 Tour of Japan by Robert K. Fitz, which was released just about a year ago. Before starting this book review, it's probably proper to put out a disclaimer. I have neither received a free evaluation copy of this book, nor have I been commissioned to do a book review. The opinions herein are my own and of my own volition, based on the contents of the book. This award-winning book, most recently winning the Sabre Seymour Medal, is the latest must-read book about Japanese baseball. Right up there with Robert Whiting's You Gotta Have Wa. The book itself is broken down into five parts. Part 1 covers the background leading up to the 1934 tour. Part 2 is the arrival of the All-Stars and the start of the tour. Part 3 is a continuation of the tour, but a little bit more from the Japanese side of things and what's going on in Japan. Part 4 is a wrap-up of the tour, and then the players head off to Shanghai and the Philippines. Part 5 covers the war and post-war eras. Personally, having had an American education, the emphasis in history was always on Europe, North America, and a little bit of South America. Very little was taught about Asia in general, or Japan in particular. I had never even heard of Commodore Perry until I moved to Japan, where he was one of the most well-known historical Americans with festivals and such throughout the country celebrating his arrival in the 1800s. The reason for Japan entering World War II that I had been taught was because they weren't allowed to have as large a navy as other imperialist powers like Great Britain and the US. The factors leading Germany and Italy to war were covered in great detail when I was in school. Japan, except for their day of infamy, were just brushed over as though they were the red-headed stepchild of the Axis powers. Rob, though, he brings the history of Japan in that era to life. Running in parallel with the Major Leaguers Tour are factions within Japan trying to bring it to war. It's as though they're living in an alternate reality. Or was it that the players were being shown an alternate reality? It's really hard to tell, especially in the first half of the book. Whereas part two of the book seemed to be a kind of honeymoon of sorts for the traveling major leaguers, some warts started to become visible throughout part three. The mood for the hosts and guests alike shifted just a little bit. Nonetheless, by the end of part four, the tour was clearly a huge success that appeared to promise an everlasting friendship between Japan and the United States. But, as we all know, that wasn't to be. The Meiji Restoration Factions, who kind of remind me of tea partiers to a degree, were eventually able to take control of the country and destroy it. Now what is really great about this kind of historical account is that not only does Rob cover the events that happened, but the background to those events, such as what were the circumstances at the time? And in between it all, the reader is entertained with baseball and the personalities of some of the greatest players ever to wear a uniform. As the title suggests, Babe Ruth played a large role in the tour. I had heard the story about Babe refusing to go on the tour until he was shown a full-page ad in a Japanese newspaper with his face on it. It seemed kind of self-centered to me and not very appealing toward the Babe. Yet the details of the persistent Suzuki-san were never a part of those stories. And the way Fitzsun describes the jolly acceptance that Babe gave in that barber shop, that nearly brought a tear to my eye. That is the kind of power that Rob brings to the descriptions of the events in this book. 
there were many such instances, I must admit. Then there was the amazing game where Eiji Sawamura struck out Geringer, Ruth, Gehrig, and Fox in succession. Now this game is very well known among people who have studied any history of Japanese baseball. At least the overview of Sawamura's one to nothing losses. So it was a thrill to be able to actually see that game, albeit secondhand in this book. Now, while subsequent games that Sawamura threw were not quite as effective, one at least learns why he was so effective in this one game and not others. But I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'll just leave it at that. But Fitzson does do an excellent job of giving Sawamura a thorough biography throughout this book, right up to his death in the Pacific and how his image was used after the war. The espionage part of the book's title dealt with the various myths surrounding Mo Berg. Now, everything Mo did looked somewhat suspicious, with him somehow blending into the background as he went about filming in areas where photography was strictly forbidden. But part five where all of the threads of the various stories are tied up, dispels any such myths, and Rob does it with authority. From his infatuation with Japan during an earlier tour, Mo kind of struck me as many misfits in the Western cultures do, myself included, who have been attracted to Japan in almost every generation since Commodore Perry's opening of the country making it seem kind of odd to me that he would have gone over as a spy. The explanation is plenty satisfactory. But back to the present. In his acceptance speech for the Sabre Seymour Medal at the Nine Conference Banquet just last weekend, Fitzson said that his goal for Bonsai Babe Ruth was to educate American baseball fans on the Japanese game and, quote, simply to entertain, to tell a good story. And let me tell you, that he did. This book is for anyone, from someone just starting an interest in Japanese baseball to those who think they have a deep knowledge of the game. I really enjoyed Rob's Wally Yonamine biography before this, but this one tops it. I strongly recommend this book. There is one slight caveat, though. I would avoid the audible version of this book. The reader, Robin Bloodworth, really needed to take a week and learn how to pronounce Japanese vowels. I cringed each time he said Eiji Sawamura as Eiji Sawamura. What's the I doing in there? Yomuri Shimbun as Yomuri Shimban. And even saying Babe Rusu, because they can't pronounce the TH, as Babe Rusa. Where'd the U go? Oh, even my wife, trying not to pay attention, asked if an onsen was an onsen. Seriously audible, I expected a professionally done reading. Could you not even get an exchange student in the studio to help the reader with how to pronounce things properly? Nonetheless, I strongly recommend you buy this book and avoid the audible version. And now it's time for the Pocket Calendar. The regular season starts this Friday, March 29th. The opening day matchups are Hiroshima Carp vs. Giants at Tokyo Dome, Hanshin Tigers vs. the Tokyo Yakult Swallows at Jingu Kyujo. DNA Yokohama Bay Stars will take on the Chunichi Dragons in Nagoya Dome. The Hokkaido Nipponham Fighters challenge the Saitama Seibu Lions at Seibu Dome in Saitama. The Oryx Buffaloes will be taking on the Chibalote Marines at QVC Stadium in Chiba. And the 
Tohoku Lakuten Golden Eagles will be playing the Fukuoka SoftBank Hawks in Yahoo Oku Dome in Fukuoka. I don't really like the new name for the stadium. The 85th Annual Invitational High School Baseball Tournament, also known as Spring Koshien, began this past Friday, March 22nd, and will run for 13 days, extended for rainouts, which there usually are. We've already had a few really good games, a Sayonara victory, and some blowouts. The intensity of Koshien Tournament is always enjoyable, and if you can, I'd recommend catching it. Check out justin.tv when games are available. Also, look out for the Japan Baseball Weekly Podcast tomorrow, March 25th. Topics will include the WBC, a chat with Bert Bylevin, and predictions for the upcoming season. Be sure to tune in. And with that, I submit to you this week's Pro Yaki Report. Thank you for joining me. Till next week, take care. <laughs>